following is a live LV Rocks original webcast. Visit LVRocks.com for studio cam and live chat room. Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. I'm Kurt, your host. Uh, today in the studio, I have, uh, sorry. Here I am, Mike <laughs> I McCullough. I have Michael McCullough next back, to me. <laughs> back from the dead almost. <laughs> a couple of weeks and I forget your name, huh? And then uh, we have Perry Haichu. Uh We're coming to you live from the studios at lvrocksradio.com. And behind the boards, we have Liss today making us sound great. So, boy, uh, it's been an interesting week here in Nevada with the uh, Democratic Convention, huh? And we're back in the national news for the wrong reasons again. <laughs> a- absolutely, we are. And, and you know, uh, uh, on a personal note, I'd like to, to say thanks for people who sent well wishes when uh, uh, when I was out. I had recent uh, cardiac surgery that was very unexpected, uh, but I am expected to recover fully and continue this fight uh, for our rights as Americans uh, to put whatever it is that we want to put into our body that is not harmful and is not toxic to us. And so, you know, in that, uh, we're, we're involved in the political process. And uh, just in this past weekend, we had the uh, Nevada uh, Democratic State Convention, uh, which ta- turned into a, uh, a shout fest between the Bernie bros and the, and the Hillary gals and, and you know, of, of both sexes, of course. And, uh, you know, uh, just having a, a, a demonstration of how not to leave a good impression. You know, part of the problem, and you and I were talking about this just before, uh, Perry, is that um, the lifeblood of political change is to get new voters, especially younger voters, engaged in the process. Because for the most part, the largest voting bloc that, that votes are the senior citizens. And they are, they'll protect Social Security and Medicare, but they're also typically very conservative. And what we see here uh, on both the left and the right are voters who have been previously disengaged from the process or are getting excited, whether it's about Bernie or whether it's, it's about Donald Trump. And then you have something like this happen where it makes it seem as if the system is rigged against them. And more importantly than any individual candidate that they might support you don't want to lose those voters for 8 10 20 years or more no definitely not it's been a recurring theme it seems on both sides of the aisle and that's what i was alluding to uh in an earlier facebook conversation i was having with somebody uh this happened on the republican side four years ago uh, with ron paul supporters there were a group of younger voters who had net not been involved or at least not publicly involved in the voting process before who were getting excited about this new candidate and they wanted to make their voices heard and the powers that be within the party shunned their voice from being heard at the state convention when it actually mattered when the delegates were awarded when they wanted to take their voice to the national convention so they could at least if not having their candidate elected at least have the party platform adjusted to have their voices heard and that was not an option they changed the rules at the last minute they disallowed they disallowed the delegates from even being entered into the uh, into the facility at some points and all hell broke loose and the story died down rather quickly because well that's business as usual and uh, here we are four years later and on the Democratic side we have this happening uh, uh, with the Bernie Sanders supporters uh, whether or not Bernie is going to win the election is not likely because of the superdelegate math and things of that nature. Well, but lobbyist re- powers. Well, regardless, <laughs> wh- I, I don't understand why the such blatant disregard for the democratic process. Why On if, both sides yeah, of the aisle. Why yeah. would you go through these steps purposefully to tell, like, basically, it seems to me like they're not reaching out to voters. They're telling them stay home. They like things the way they are. And when I say they, the powers within mm-hmm. both political parties 
want the uh, the balance to remain how it has been. I don't believe that they are truly interested in reaching out to new voting blocks. And you know, it, it's interesting that you, you refer to Ron Paul and you, you referred to him just a moment ago, you know, as, as, as a new choice. Both in the case of Ron Paul and Bernie Sanders, uh, they're hardly young voices. Right. These are both people at the, the arguably the end of their careers. And what attracted so many new voters to them and so many younger idealistic voters was that these were people who yes they had been in Congress for decades yes they've been involved in the political process but in each of their cases these were men who stayed true to their principles throughout and I think that's what attracts the especially the younger idealistic voter is somebody who's telling it like it is who has the record to show that that they they walk the walk and not just talk the talk so you think that younger voters are looking for honesty I do, and I think to some degree that's why you see a flocking towards Donald Trump. And I'm not going to say he's the most honest person out there, but he seems to be an authentic figure rather than your typical sure. guarded politician. I can, believe, I can get behind that, sure. Uh, and I think not only the honesty, I think I think what's attracting more of the younger uh, voters is the, the anti-establishment, the fact that these people aren't beholden to all these lobbyists, which is the the – the root of the whole problem when it comes mm -hmm. to politics is the fact is we have lobbying and lobbying is basically buying of buying votes and you know the younger generation is sick and tired of it it's like the people with the money buy the votes and but and write the laws to favor themselves and you know and the younger people they don't have the money they haven't gotten to the point in their careers in their life yet to where and they even the rich ones them. haven't inherited it yet yeah <laughs> exactly so so i think a lot of it is you know the fact is i think I think most of America is getting tired of the fact, you know, that our politicians are being bought and sold. We can only hope that most of America <laughs> is getting tired well, of that fact. And here come, and the story now is there's this big push and pull, and I, I, I enjoy watching how the media is choosing to cover this Democratic uh, state convention debacle. Yes, you have stories coming out of certain news outlets that say Bernie Sanders should apologize and he should be held responsible for the actions of these outrageous uh, protesters, this small number of people who are causing this big thing. And then on the other side, I read other news outlets who are spinning the story in a completely different way. They say, well, the Democratic Party are the ones who are at fault here. They are the ones who should be apologizing to the, cam to the, Sta to the Sanders supporters for you know, not allowing them to uh, have their voices heard. And even another uh, outlet is spinning it in a third way. So there are such conflicting viewpoints of what's going on and it's like you're reporting the story but how is the story being reported and how are how are they choosing to spend that on behalf of the li their uh, listenership? It's, it's kind of like the uh, the scientific uh, uh, theory or the experiment of Schrodinger's cat you know where, where you have a cat in a box and and the box is closed is the cat dead or alive you don't know until you open the box and look in so the mere act of observing the experiment will can change the outcome of the experiment and it's the same thing here uh, and you're absolutely right it's not just the events that are taking place on the ground but it's how people are reporting them and and this is big money big media uh, with entrenched interests so they're they're skewing I think what happens and you know today's younger people and not to say older people are, are dumb no not at all but today's younger people are smarter or more tech savvy are exposed to more information at an earlier age than any generation before and and I don't think they're being uh, they're willing to be sold down the river as as easily as prior generations may have been mm -hmm. The age of information does have those consequences. Yeah, it so, does. It yeah, does. Uh, Bernie actually came out in a statement on Nevada uh, today, and uh, in his words, he said, "The Democratic Party, Democratic Party, has a choice. It can open its doors and welcome into the party people who are prepared to fight for real economic change and social change, oh people who are willing to take on Wall Street, corporate greed, and fossil fuel industry, which is destroying this planet. Or the party can choose to maintain its status quo structure, remain dependent on big money, campaign contributions, and the party with." limited participation and limited energy he's digging his heels in and he's not he, he's he's standing his ground on this and, and get it here we are not 
we're, we're not being pro Bernie here. We are no. not uh, advocating for any one uh, candidate. What we're doing is we're looking at the process that's happening and, and saying, look, this is how you lose voters. This is how you get people turned off. And, and this is not the best ideals of what we're supposed to be doing in this country. Well, no. you know, he said recently, he's like, oh, I, I intend, if Hillary Clinton was to be you know, nominated, I would eventually support her mm -hmm. because I think that Donald Trump's the wrong choice and this mm -hmm. and that. Meanwhile, you have Donald Trump tweeting out, oh, Bernie should run as an independent. He's not being treated fairly. He's already starting to poke mm -hmm. at those mad Bernie supporters because he knows that they're going to get screwed by how he perceives it, and he's going to try to court them over. But, but hopefully people will have learned a little bit of history and saw how um, Ross Perot did that to, to George the mm First -hmm. against Clinton in 92, and how Ralph Nader did that uh, to uh, Al Gore in 2000. And as much as I would love for us to have a viable third party in this country, it's, Sanders it's, would bury Clinton for sure. Uh, yes, Sanders mm -hmm. would bury Clinton, uh, but you know, would would he then would he bury Clinton and Trump? That's that's part of the that's problem yeah, there. And if you look at the if you look at electoral uh, polls that are out there now, um, Donald Trump is pulling even with Hillary Clinton, and and so it could be a toss up of who's going to win that race. And yet Sanders is remaining 13 points ahead of Trump. So mm -hmm. one would think that if the Democratic Party really wanted to win the election and really wanted to, to, to solidify their base that they would go with the candidate who is most likely to prevail in November. Unfortunately, and you can see it that big money donors like Goldman Sachs, the big banking interests, they're not giving money to Trump and the Republicans now. They're donating to Hillary because they think it'll be easier to work with her. And that just, it's mm -hmm. not that, not that they, they shouldn't give to her, but it just signals where they think think the corporate friendly player is which plays even more into sanders hands by saying look at who's donating to her now instead mm -hmm. of their you know if the if wall street thinks that hillary is a better choice than donald trump the billionaire mm -hmm. how politically can you know how much of an insider is she well how how true is the the story i've been telling at that point um it's it, it's it's wild it, it is a it is a crazy situation, and you know we're we're going to be watching it unfold over oh, the next few months. I, I, I almost Go forgot ahead. about something um we, we People were talking for a while about, oh, you know, there's not going to be a Republican Party left after the June convention, and, you know, the party's going to split, and they're going to run someone. Well, hell, what if we have four people running, the new Freedom Party and an independent Bernie Sanders and Hillary and Trump and Gary Johnson, the Libertarian? Go, sure. go from a two to a four instead or a of five, a two to a three. Or a six if Bloomberg decides to jump back in at this point because why the hell not? Everyone else is doing it. Mm -hmm. You could have four, five, six people legitimately running for president at the when this is all said and done. And then when... When that is all said and done, you you could have a president of the United States who's elected by only a small plurality of voters, mm -hmm. maybe 20, 25 percent. Then so be it. Case. So, well, it, it, it would be interesting. I don't think that scenario is no. going to unfold. No. But, um, you know, it, it certainly bears watching. And I know there are a lot of people out there who just throw their hands up and don't want to hear about politics. But in truth, uh, it controls your life it controls every the people that you put in office are materially uh, changing what you can and cannot do in this country it and has it profound matter effects which side on, you're on. Oh, it has profound effects no. on our industry both locally and nationally oh, every single politician I mean, that gets elected every judge every municipal even like the school trustees and people like that could potentially have profound influence yeah. on it well you got to look at i mean you got to say in in almost every city in every county every state in this in america we're trying to get laws passed in the cannabis industry right now sure so i mean politics are a huge part of this i mean without without politics we can't get any of this stuff well who, who do you think the who are the policy makers do we have to deal with these people unfortunately well it's it's really it's the legislators but you know if you're talking about uh you know uh problems with elected officials and, and pot. Uh, uh, Keith Stroop, one of the founders of Normal, uh, came out with a, an article just a couple of days ago uh, where he points out that every state that has fully legalized marijuana to date has accomplished that by voter initiative. You know, however, in most 
statewide elected in these cases most statewide elected officials publicly opposed legalization prior to the right. vote and even after the initiatives many of them attempt to undermine those laws so so what you have here is the people have evolved on this issue long before the elected officials are and the elected officials are absolutely digging in their heels and and refusing to further this cause that they see as a, a great social moral downfall even at the same time they're bringing in tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars into their state coffers through in states like Colorado right. and, and Washington they'll gladly take the money but they'll still you know and, and down upon it in Colorado governor John Hinkenlooper who's a democrat he was first elected in 2010 reelected in 14 he made his fortune as founder of Wincoop Brewing Company in Denver he's a beer brewer Right, and he was a leading opponent of Amendment 64, which legalized mm -hmm. in 2012. And still today, when asked whether pot legalization has been a good thing or bad thing for Colorado, he can't quite decide. The new law has created tens of thousands of new jobs in the state, bringing in well over 120 million dollars in taxes to the state treasury every year. It's reduced marijuana arrests in Colorado by 80 percent, and the governor still can't make up his mind whether this is a good thing or not. He, he said said that legalization was reckless and and he told CNBC in 2015 if I could have waved a wand the day after the election in 2012 I would have reversed the election and said this was a bad idea you don't want to be the first person to do something like this and so this guy who became rich selling alcohol just can't seem to get comfortable with legal oh, marijuana well, and that's it, it blows my mind no how could uh, it, it's the over glorification of alcohol in our society that's been prevalent since I can remember since I was born not to mention the city we live in, of course, mm -hmm. is the epitome of such. But still, I, I see it on the news. You'll even see news anchors drinking wine during their broadcast sometimes and making light of it. And it's just like that's how pervasive it is. Mm -hmm. But God forbid if you want to smoke a joint and eat a pizza, holy shit, you know, we, we're going to you, you can't do that. What are you thinking? You know, it's this whole it's this whole deal. And it, to, for someone to smoke pot on TV, I think Bill Maher did Bill it. Bill Maher did it. And recently. they're just like, we're uh -huh. gonna find you and do that and the other. And it's just like, why? What's what, what? What? Why is it such a big deal when I see you know dozens of alcohol related commercials inundating my screen constantly? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's just like I said. There's just a lot of money in it. And, you know? and as we all know. Uh, alcohol is so much more harmful to the body and to mm -hmm. society than than cannabis Absolutely. is, and and there is just no grounding in rational, you know, in in reality with that. You know, in in continuing on this theme, in Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, Republican Governor Doug Ducey has been a vocal op opponent of the legalization initiative in his state. He says he believes the majority of the problems a state faces can be linked back to drugs, and I quote, from unemployment to homelessness to to domestic violence, to child neglect, to our prison population. Well, I do agree with him on the last one. We do have a prison population problem because they're putting so many people in jail for nonviolent drug offenses. No doubt. And I love how our our uh, our new sheriff has been trying to spin that spin that story. Uh, if you're not aware and you're listening here, the violent crime rate in in Las Vegas has skyrocketed almost 100 percent. In a year, we have yeah, we had three shootings yesterday alone. Yeah, I think we're at 67 or 68 murders for the year now, which is uh, on par with New York City, which has 10 times our population. So we could talk about that. Uh, but he he has said publicly that, oh, you know, some of the uh, problems we're having with our local crime is because California is emptying its prisons and those people are coming here and causing all these crimes. Well, the people they're releasing are nonviolent drug offenders usually. A lot of cannabis people. Now, I'm not saying they're all cannabis people, but there's a lot of those types of low-level crimes that are being released due to reduce that are being released due to reduce the population and I don't see any problem in that and, and the reason that California is doing this is because they're being ordered by the federal courts yeah. to do so because they have such serious overcrowding and you know and that's another Clinton thing by the way her husband and her were were big proponents and uh, and uh, architects of the three strikes law that has put so many people super predators yeah, yeah and all that and so now they're like oh you know she she tries to put herself out there as a social progressive and it's like you know i understand she's not her husband 
Mm-hmm. But there was a lot of they were uh, working together on that. Yeah. And, and she stepped up to to go to bat for for those laws. And even President Clinton has now admitted that it was a mistake for him to do so. And you see this around the world from from foreign presidents of Mexico, presidents of various mm-hmm. European countries. They're saying, boy, you know, I'm looking back at it now. What is what a terrible thing that was. Gee, that, that's awfully nice of you to say after you ruined the lives of hundreds of thousands of, of people, people yeah. plus millions of family members by, by locking them away for nonviolent offenses. Uh, it just absolutely blows my mind. So, um, all right, yeah, it's, a, it's about time for us to take our first break here. So we'll be back in just a minute. Make sure you check out our sponsors, Nevada Pure, Sahara Wellness, Essence Vegas, Digipath Labs, and Getting Legal. And when we return from the break, we'll be here with the, the editor – of Vegas Cannabis Magazine, William Sheehan. Attention medical marijuana patients. Did you know that your medicine could contain pesticides, heavy metals, and even mold? Are you really sure that you're getting the same potency every single time? Well, the answer to that question is simple. Digipath Labs. Digipath Labs is a state-approved laboratory run by scientists. So look for the Digipath Labs quality seal on your next medicine and on the door of your favorite dispensary. To learn more, go to digipathlabs.com. That's D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H labs.com. Hi, I'm Armin Yemenijin, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the lowest prices in town and the highest quality medicine please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at essencevegas.com you can also call us at 702-978-7575 once again the number is 702-978-7575 Getting Legal offers an informative and simple way for you to get your marijuana card. Why come to Getting Legal to get your marijuana card? We have a 99% approval rating and the lowest price in town. Avoid legal problems. Getting Legal can get you legal fast. Ready for a new start? Come in now and get relief from your chronic conditions affecting your quality of life. Call Getting Legal today at 702-979-9999. That's 702-979-9999. Or visit our website at gettinglegal.com to get your marijuana card today. Nevada Pure opened its doors in 2015. They provide customers with an unmatched cannabis product grown in Nevada state regulated facilities at indoor locations using a customized process that combines food grade nutrients and top grade unique soil mix that brings out the plant's best features. They pay close attention to product cleanliness, quality, curing, and processing. Their grow operations are not only environmentally friendly, but also ensure that all strains of Nevada Pure marijuana are grown in a strictly controlled atmosphere. They provide themselves on becoming an industry pioneer. They are committed to the future of regulated legal cannabis industry. They're located at 4380 Boulder Highway, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89121. They're open from Monday to Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. From the soothing sounds of a water wall to the warmth of a wood interior and beautiful artwork, as soon as you enter Sahara Wellness, you are welcomed into a relaxing space where they strive to provide their patients with a healthy balance of mind, body, and spirit. That balance is achieved through a compassionate and knowledgeable staff who possesses both a passion for the medical cannabis industry as well as an unrivaled dedication to assisting those in need of a natural method of pain relief. Contact Sahara Wellness at www. 420sahara.com or stop in their store at 420 East Sahara, Las Vegas, Nevada. All right, we're back here in, in studio with uh, William Sheehan from Vegas Cannabis Magazine. So here's Meg right here. So let's let's get into this. Welcome, welcome, Will. Thanks for t- uh, joining us today. Yeah, thank you. You can call me Bill. Right no, well, <laughs> sir, sorry about that. That's no, all right. I just, people that, uh, Co- bill collectors used to call me William back in the day before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any bill so collectors bill out there. Bill Sheehan. Just playing. So, so 
uh, Bill. You're the uh, uh, you're the publisher of Vegas Cannabis Magazine, and I see you're in your twentieth issue now. And can you give us a little uh, a little history on that? How did you get involved in publishing, and 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 specifically this? Were you involved in it before cannabis, it's, or it's all done out of love? Uh, my wife Stephanie is, I'd say, about ninety percent responsible for anything that we put out there and publish. Um, she started way back, uh, I think, about ten or twelve years ago. Uh, a little more than that, maybe we had a publication called The Blackboard Jungle. And it was for, a lot of people don't know about this, but it was for homeschoolers. And we did charter, charter school with our kids, and we homeschooled our kids. And um, they didn't have much of a social life, so we integrated with other charter schools and, and tried to have beach days and things like that. And, and, um, and then that publication spun off into another publication uh, called Central Coast Family News. And that's still out there in mm -hmm. the Central Coast today. You can um, you could check that out at centralcoastfamily.com. Mm -hmm. We're not a part of it anymore, but we founded that and created that about ten years ago. They still use the same format and the layout and the printer we add and, and still I, have advertisers in there from before. I, I think that's an important point that much of the community um, outside, you know, the immediate members of the community uh, don't realize is that we're not all stoners from high school and have just pursued this path. So many of us have had different careers or different entryways into this. Uh, just a, a, as you've said, your, your start in publishing was completely different uh, than this, but we've evolved into this area because not only do we see a need in a market niche that can be f fulfilled, but we see the relative safety of cannabis as compared with most other things that are out there and, and trying to do what we can to make a little change in public policy and restore sanity in this issue. Absolutely. I, we feel like we have a good good opportunity to have a voice and be a good platform and foundation for a lot of internationally and locally recognized people to uh, stand up for cannabis, if you will. That's one of the public service announcements we do. We did the 15th one uh, this month with the Cultivators for Medicine. Um, back to um, Central Coast Family News. When we left there, uh, we didn't publish anything for a while. We actually even had a publication here in Vegas called LV Family News, and uh, we worked with a lot of the restaurants and close places. It, it only lasted about five or six months, and, and we thought, oh, we'll let it go. Publishing's but, um, a tough game. You know, you know, it really wasn't. You just got to find something that you want to do. And this, it wasn't like we were just trying to find something. It was more like I've done pest control my whole life. Mm -hmm. I have the highest license in pest control in, ca in California and Nevada, and that provides a passive income for us. And so we used to use those other magazines sort of as an advertising tool for me to kind of wear two hats. And so my wife never, I mean, she had a job here working for an attorney. And, and, um, and when that kind of uh, fizzled out, the, the attorney kind of went moved out of state or something. And when that fizzled out, my wife was looking for another thing, that, something else to do. And at that time, it was a perfect opportunity. Someone gave her some cannabis capsules. And at that time, she was kind of resenting me because I'm a stoner from high school. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm your typical stoner from high school, but I'm not unintelligent. And I don't, you know, we, we, uh, we're we educated. You know, we, we take pride in editing and, and finding the, the best things to say for people and put out a good positive vibe. And so what, we, what we've done with this is um, after, after about a week of these cannabis capsules that my, my wife's friend gave her, um, she, my wife was taking those to stop her sleeplessness. Mm -hmm. And so she stopped um, taking her sleeping pills after about a week. And she also realized that she wasn't using albuterol. And so now here we are 22 months later. Um, our, our magazine's a good timeline for this because it happened about two months before we started. Uh, she started researching and learning like, hell, this is medicine. The truest plant form of this medicine is this, is this uh, oil that I'm ingesting. And so we're working to, to find the best medicine for her. I mean, that's my family. This magazine was built for our family. Once we, once something happens in your house, you realize that this plan is real and it's medicine. And I want the, the doctors to stop practicing on us. You know, you know? I, it, for, from what you say um, uh, on this, and I, I completely agree with that, uh, there's an article that I had pulled up uh, that says Big Pharma shaking in their boots as 80% of cannabis users give up prescription pills for pot. And the Center yeah. for Addictions Research of British Columbia uh, explains that the survey of 473 adults found that 87% of respondents gave up prescription medications, alcohol, and other drugs in favor of cannabis. And adults under 40 were likely to give up 
all three of these for medical cannabis. Yep. You know, it's just, you know, so what you're saying is absolutely spot on true. And when you find something that is less harmful, that is more effective, as a good person, look at the you side effects. Share it. What about all these beneficial side effects? You got happiness. You get to sleep, eat, relax. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, you get hungry. You know. Well, and, but you see that <laughs> happiness. That's the big problem. Mm -hmm. If if cannabis did not produce euphoria, if it didn't get you high, all around the world it would be seen as the miracle drug, the wonder no cure doubt. for everything else, so useful and everything. It is a but, miracle but, drug because yeah. it makes you happy yeah. too. It has that, beneficial that, side that effects. High yeah, is, for some, oh, I, for I some reason, I for some reason, that's the bad part. Yeah. 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 It's and it's, it's complicated because there's head patients and then you got health patients. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm a head patient, but I also realized that even like when, when you have a hard day's work, I used to come home from being a teamster and I would I just want to smoke, get home and smoke and relax. And I deserve that. That was my mm -hmm. reward. And even though that I was a head patient, I was I was taking care of pains that I would neglect or bumps and bruises. I mean, but it's no athlete, less of a reward um, than the guy who wants to come home and have a six pack. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. And, if I want to smoke a cigarette, who cares? And, but, you know, the, you know that that in true is medicine. That's allowing you to relieve the stress of the day that you had and absolutely that, it's a is, reward. that is medicine that's medicine mm -hmm. i mean feeling good is is me medicine haven't they you say always said that Kurt? yeah laughter is the best medicine we've heard mm -hmm. that year mm -hmm. after uh, ever since i was a kid i heard that okay well what does cannabis do it makes you laugh it makes you happy you know and the I biggest mean, thing too that i notice is that is that medicine a lot of times people have this idea that it's a pill form it's mm -hmm. some sort of, you got to go to the doctor to get it we can put it in pills for you now but, it, but what i'm saying too is this medicine <laughs> this medicine that we're that we're doing is complicated like a lot of people that we talk to that, that i hand this magazine to that are tourists like on the strip or fremont street or people that come here and i try to teach them about reciprocity and what's going on with this plant Half the battle is just getting them to take the magazine. Mm -hmm. And some people are hunting me down for it. And, you know, but the ones that I find that I can reach out to that don't know that there's a medicinal side of this plant, they look at me as a stoner. I look like a stoner and that's cool. You know, that's, it's whatever. I don't care. I, I, I do what I got to do for my family. And that makes me who I am. If I, if I want to grow a beard and look like a bum, then that's on me, you know, <laughs> but bottom line is when I hand this stuff to people that, that are conservative alcoholics, if you will, um, I'll hand it to them. And if they take that step to say, you know what, I'm going to take this part of the time, half the time I, I get it to them. It's like, if you don't like it, beat some flies with it or throw it in the trash or, mm -hmm. you know, use it for a doorstop or, mm -hmm. you know, there's many uses for this magazine. You know what I mean? It's, you can fan it off when it gets 120 degrees here, fan yourself off. But half the struggle is getting people to realize that this is a medicine and it's not just about the weed and the plant. This plant can be extracted and, and cure stuff that's not even on the list to, to be cured, mm -hmm. like my wife's asthma. Mm -hmm. I, I want I want asthma on that list of, of uh, things that it can help because it's definitely a bronchial dilator. And that was that was actually one of the one of the main uses back when prohibition set in that the American Medical Association hmm. was using cannabis I to treat that. asthma and in cigarette form mm -hmm. um, because it is a bronchial dilator. And, and, you know, prohibition was against <coughs> their recommendation because they were using it and they were finding new uses for it all the time. And the government said, we don't care what you have to say as the American Medical Association, we're going to prohibit this drug anyway. And and just to keep things fair, because, you know, I, I, I hate the thought that, that some prohibitionists can, can listen to this and say, ah, oh, they're just a bunch of stoners, they're just pl punching it on. Mm -hmm. You know, while, yes, it can treat asthma, there is also a risk of, of inhaled, smoked marijuana uh, increases the incidence of bronchitis. So it irritates, it irritates the bronchial tubes as the smoke is going down into, into your lungs. And you're burning leaves and putting them into your body. Yeah. Okay. I always thought that if someone was ever to die from cannabis use, it would be like emphysema or something like that, just from co like chronic, chronic smoking. But so, you yeah. still never like, hear of it. Like my wife's asthma, though. Um, she was just trying to cure her sleeplessness. Her right. friend was trying to stop her from taking that one last sleeping pill. You know about mm -hmm. the fear that like take a sleeping pill and never wake up. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. So her friend was just trying to get her to stop taking the sleeping pills. After a week of that work, and she's like, "Holy crap! I haven't used a, have to use my albuterol for the whole week." And we noticed that she would use it occasionally at first, but it's been 22 months now, and wow. she she doesn't take it, and she ingests a cannabis capsule that. It's basically from a ground up plant. Um, you know, you can, I, I, I want to invite anybody to check this machine out. It's called the green oil machine. You know, learn your laws. I'm not saying do anything, you know, but I, I, I want to he heal my wife and I can do it in my house. So mm -hmm. I, I turn this plant that we grow into an oil mixed with 
coconut and now she cures herself mm-hmm. and and, and I'm, I'm eager to find a dispensary to carry a product that we can replace this with so we don't have to do such a procedure we, we should just be able to get it and and consume it we want we're consumers yeah. well, you they, know? They, they have the they have the coconut capsules capsules now at the dispensaries I, I believe uh, it's evergreen organics is making the the, the vegan infused coconut capsules needs to be needs to be yeah. on the around the affordability level like yeah I think, I yeah. think that I, I try to talk we, we work with I think 15 or more dispensaries and and quite a few cultivators and we roll out products in our introduction section and and I I ask every one of them please please have one cabinet in your store that's all for the patients that's non for profit just you know if you have capsules in there you got RSO in there you got creams and stuff in there that's that's not for the head patients have mm-hmm. have all one cabinet that's just for you know for the patients make your profit on the other stuff that attention will draw um, people for health issues yeah, right they're, into they're, your dispensary. They're still going to buy the wax. They're still going to buy still, the flour. It is. <laughs> we, need, we need more yeah. healthy stuff, and it needs to be affordable. If there's no – we don't have insurance. We can't just say, oh, let me get cannabis insurance and, and get get these <laughs> capsules. You know, it's – what's unfortunate, though, is I'm, I'm going to talk about this for a minute. I was a teamster, right? And everybody knows the loopholes of, like, you're going to get drug tested. You're going to get randomed. Um, if, if someone randoms you – oops. Someone randoms you, you, you – a lot of people have a piss kit or they have, you mm-hmm. know, different ways to try to hide it or this and that. And I found the best loophole is get Marinol. If you got a job out there and you got a boss that's a conservative alcoholic, get a Marinol prescription. If you don't know a doctor that that uh, that offers those, call around. Call the doctors in our in our book and I guarantee you can find some resources in there. Okay. And that'll keep you out of trouble. And and for the audience, Marinol is a schedule three drug in the in the federal pharmacopoeia, meaning that uh, any uh, pharm- any physician can recommend it. Uh, understand that Marinol though is synthetic THC. So it is only one component of the overall mix of cannabinoids that you get from the whole plant or whole plant extracts, yet absolutely it will cover you yeah. if you I've if never if you get one. a. I've never eaten one. But it's and, a 13, and they're horribly it's expensive. A, it's a thirteen hundred dollar yeah. prescription that my insurance as a teamster pays for, and I just have to put 10, 10 bucks out there. So I okay. put, I pay the ten bucks. They cover it. They can't tell me I'm not allowed to take it. I have THC in my system. Here we go. It's because of that Marinol that I don't really take. If right. you can keep. A long-term prescription under your insurance, that is a definite good thing. Yeah. But if you're not so blessed to have insurance, it's not... No, it's not feasible. Yeah, but if someone, has, if someone has a good job, though, I'm talking about people... Oh, yeah. Like that job, oh, yeah. I was making 35 bucks an hour. Oh, yeah. I, I was an IOC while, stagehand in a former life. I know, yeah. I know all about it. And all it takes is one conservative alcoholic to say, that guy smokes weed, you know, and, and they go, it. they random you. And if you got... Even if you smoked weed a week ago, people that aren't heavy, mm-hmm. you still... You, they, they got it. Everybody's carrying piss kits and everybody runs to you. Bill, you all right? No, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. I got it. Yeah. You know, and I don't, I would just pee dirty and, and say I have a Marinol prescription. This is the kind of stuff I think people need to know out there. However, I, I would say that, that, that with that, it, it, Works in the general situations, but I know somebody who got um, uh, caught up in, in the legal system, and as part of their uh, uh, probation, they were not allowed to use cannabis, and they went ahead and got themselves a prescription for Marinol for exactly this purpose, and the judge shut them down and said, for the duration of your probation, you cannot use Marinol because it is a screen for this. That verifies that they can't tell the difference between Drabinol and, and traditional THC right. yes. therefore get your job and all if you have a Amen. good job that you want to protect your ass get get your job and all and don't eat it just stock them up throw them in a the trash mm-hmm. whatever but you have and, a prescription and it's not for that it. we're telling people to do this and to to circumvent <laughs> the system we're no, no no but but it is more a lament on the fact that People are forced to right. do this just when they're Shoot. trying to self-medicate with a less harmful substance to yeah. go to work um, but look the problem with that is it won't work for a pre-employment screening anymore. You used to be able to go get a Marinol prescription and go get a job, and that would work. But mm-hmm. today, these companies are removing themselves directly from that by hiring a chief medical officer. Let's say I want to work at MGM Grand as a bartender, mm-hmm. and they go through the process, and that's then it's time. Well, you know, that's a problem because then they'll send me to their chief medical officer for them to screen through my prescriptions and my qualifying conditions. Yeah. So then you have to talk to this medical officer and do all See this. See the process. Yeah. Just grow weed. Cut it down, hang it, smoke mm-hmm. it. If you're out, go to the dispensary, buy some, have some fun. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's okay to have fun with this medicine. We got a plant medicine that just happens to be fun. You know, Absolutely. Look at all the bullshit hoops people have to go through to just make sure that you're allowed to smoke but and yeah, medicate but, yourself. But like people are falling into that trap. They're like, if you go see this doctor and get a Marinol script, you'll be able to get that job right away. And that's not true anymore. You have yeah. to have that consistent prescription over a period of time. So mm-hmm. when that medical officer looks, they're like, oh, you've been taking this pill for this qualifying condition for a long period of time. You didn't just go do this just to get the job. And then they'll, you know, they'll shut you down. I've had a down. prescription for that for – Three years. Yeah, that, that's that's anymore. legit. Yeah. And, and sure. in truth, though, um, most most HR departments are not looking to hire people over 35 years of age anyway because the insurance premiums go way up uh, from that point. So most most. Most companies are really looking for that younger well, talent that, that will work long hours, low wages. Most companies aren't looking to hire anyone at all that's working full-time because they have mm-hmm. to pay benefits. They're just hiring part-time employees, period. They'll Absolutely put you on true. call or at the bottom of the extra board or whatever. It depends on what kind of job you're looking to apply for. Mm-hmm. But still, it's like, you know, are they looking to hire people over 35? Probably not. But the long hours is not an issue anymore because now with the new laws, they don't want you working long hours because they got to pay you for them. Mm-hmm. So they'd rather hire more people and just have a higher turnover rate. The old, oh, you know, it costs us a lot of money to hire and fire people. That's a bunch of nonsense. Watch, they, watch it, Perry. You're yep. starting to sound you like a socialist cool. over you there. You know what's cool? You know what I realized, <laughs> oh, too? That's all right. Yeah. With all these dispensaries opening up, everybody's asking me, like, do you know good people? They're not like, hey, do you know anybody under 35? And I know they're mm-hmm. not going to do that. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is we got a bunch of dispensaries, cultivators, production facilities, labs, any mm-hmm. affiliated businesses, smoke shops that mm-hmm. are all getting bigger and needing employees. Mm-hmm. Dude, yeah. Don't be don't be ashamed to walk up in there and don't smell like weed, but be honest. You know, I have my medical card or or you know that Absolutely. person that no person is gonna for sure. that person's gonna so. look at you like a client too, a patient and a client. If you work there, they're gonna give you a deal and. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, it's uh, it's time for us to take our second break. Be sure you check out our sponsors, Nevada Pure. Look for their 20% off coupon in yeah. Vegas Cannabis Magazine this month. Sahara Wellness, Essence Vegas, Digipath Labs, and Getting Legal. We'll be right back. Attention medical marijuana patients. Do you know what your cannabis actually contains? Are there heavy metals, pesticides, or even mold? And what strength is it really? And is it really what you need? Well, the answers to these questions are simple. Digipath Labs. Digipath Labs is a Nevada state-approved medical marijuana testing facility whose scientists carefully test products for safety and potency all within the state's rigorous mandate. You can buy with confidence and trust knowing Digipath Labs has tested your medicine. If you're a licensed grower, dispenser, extractor, or edibles manufacturer in Nevada and want unparalleled customer service and consumer confidence, go to digipathlabs.com and find out what we can do for you. And as a patient, only go to dispensaries that carry the Digipath Labs seal of approval. That's digipathlabs.com, D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H labs.com. Or call us at 702-209-2429. That's 702-209-2429. Hi, I'm Armin Yemenijan, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the lowest prices in town and the highest quality medicine please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at essencevegas.com you can also call us at 702-978-7575 once again the number is 702-978-7575 Getting Legal offers an informative and simple way for you to get your marijuana card. Why come to Getting Legal to get your marijuana card? We have a 99% approval rating and the lowest price in town. Avoid legal problems. Getting Legal can get you legal fast. Ready for a new start? Come in now and get relief from your chronic conditions affecting your quality of life. Call Getting Legal today at 702-979-9999. That's 702-979-9999. Or visit our website at gettinglegal.com to get your marijuana card today. Nevada Pure opened its doors in 2015. They provide customers with an unmatched cannabis product grown in Nevada state regulated facilities at indoor locations using a customized process that combines food grade nutrients and top grade unique soil mix that brings out the plant's best features. They pay close attention to product cleanliness, quality, curing, and processing. 
Their grow operations are not only environmentally friendly, but also ensure that all strains of Nevada Pure marijuana are grown in a strictly controlled atmosphere. They provide themselves on becoming an industry pioneer. They are committed to the future of regulated legal cannabis industry. They're located at 4380 Boulder Highway, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89121. They're open from Monday to Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. From the soothing sounds of a water wall to the warmth of a wood interior and beautiful artwork, as soon as you enter Sahara Wellness, you are welcomed into a relaxing space where they strive to provide their patients with a healthy balance of mind, body, and spirit. That balance is achieved through a compassionate and knowledgeable staff who possesses both a passion for the medical cannabis industry as well as an unrivaled dedication to assisting those in need of a natural method of pain relief. Contact Sahara Wellness at www.420sahara.com or stop in their store at 420 East Sahara, Las Vegas, Nevada. Bam. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. We, uh, we have in the studio, we have uh, Michael McCullough, Perry Haichu, and our guest, Bill Sheehan from Vegas Cannabis Magazine. And, you know, I want to get back into this with you, Bill, but before that, I just want to uh, touch on something uh, uh, that Paul Armentano, one of the founders of Normal, uh, recently wrote. Uh, and, and this was in the papers in, in the last week that, um, you know, the DEA has long claimed that international treaty obligations mandate the, the agency to license no more than a single entity to grow marijuana for research purposes. Since 1968, that's been down at the University mm -hmm. of Mississippi, Mississippi uh, which uh, operates a program for the National Institute on Drug Abuse. And in, in 2011, the DEA went so far as to set aside a ruling from one of its own administrative law judges in order to continue this monopoly. Uh, the order uh, argued that permitting private production of cannabis for research purposes was in the public interest, but the DEA said otherwise, claiming that such activity would be inconsistent with United States obligations under the Single Convention Treaty. <laughs> now, a newly released correspondence from the State Department, uh, from their Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement to Senator Kristen Gillibrand of New York, uh, reveals that the DEA's allegations were, in fact, incorrect. And they say, the State Department says that if a party to the Single Convention issued multiple licenses for the cultivation of cannabis for medical and scientific purposes, that fact alone would not be a sufficient basis to conclude that the party was acting in contravention of the convention. And so wh what this really means is that for a long time, uh, aspects of the government have been arguing that they cannot liberalize their laws, they cannot change things because it would violate UN treaty obligations. And you have people who are normally very socially conservative, largely on the Republican side, who say, oh, the UN is evil, the UN is bad, world government, we yeah, shouldn't Yeah, we don't want that. them in here. We don't want them. <laughs> and yet, then they point to the UN and say, oh, we can't do anything about liberalizing marijuana laws because that would violate our UN treaty. Well, of course. And, you know, it's, it's absolutely insane. But I got to say that I would think the State Department has it all over the DEA when it comes to interpreting our obligations and our and our national uh, you know our national obligations and international treaties and you know this is just another example of an upstart government agency that was founded in 1971 trying to grab as much power for itself as it possibly can and it's up to every one of you out there to get out there and vote for politicians who are going to change that and to vote you know for IP2 here in the state of Nevada and to normalize this and, and not allow these agencies to run amok in a Big Brother fashion. End of rant. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, that's, it, it, that, that has been a problem. I mean, Sue Sicily, uh, she's been trying to get quality cannabis to do her testing on, and all she can get is the, the government swag, which mm -hmm. she showed me some pictures of it at it's worse than that brickweed we used to get. Yeah, she's, trying to work, she's trying to work with veterans, the people who yeah. we should most be taking care of. Exactly, and I mean, they're growing this stuff for that. And speaking of Sue Sisley, uh, she'll be speaking on Wednesday the 25th at the Breaking Barriers uh, event uh, being hosted by the Grove at uh, UNLV Hank Greenspun School of Journalism and Media. So if uh, you're interested in that, check out our website, wecan702.org, and we'll have some information on that up there for you. So. 
So let's talk a little bit more about the magazine. Um, you know, here we are in a, in a time where uh, many magazines, Newsweek, for example, ceased, ceased their print publications. And you have a, a lot of Hearst papers and various papers uh, and magazines just going out of business. And yet every time I look at Vegas Cannabis, it's getting fattier and fattier. Because we're talking about weed. We're not talking about the bullshit going on in the world. You know, we want to promote positivity and push good stuff out there and promote writers that have something positive to say that can affect our readers. You know, that's why it, it grows. That's why we have our advertiser support, plus the value for an ad, our advertising, our, our media kit. Go online and look at it. If you're interested and you, you don't have an ad in here yet and you're an MME, you should definitely check out our media kit. And uh, call me up personally. I could even give you a better deal. That's, that's what this is about. We're real people. It's just me and my wife. We've been married 20 years this 4th of July. Congratulations. Um, yeah, I don't know many 43-year-olds that could say that. No. And love my wife dearly. She, she is the apple in this magazine, the apple in my eye. My kids are all awesome because of her. And um, she home, helped homeschool them as we grew up. You guys first heard us touch on that. And mm -hmm. the reason we're able to continue our growth, I think, is, is because we're, we're real. You know, we put it out there. We, we um, you know, we, we follow patient parties, patient events. We talk about uh, the patient's right to grow. And we also push the legal dispensaries that, that have, you know, advertisements in our magazine. We want to introduce products. I got a product introduction every month. Uh, you can see new products coming out. Um, that section is going to grow more and more. That's going to bring more involvement into the community for uh, showing them stuff that they can actually pick up at a dispensary. You know? yeah. So you're building your business by helping to build a much larger industry. Yeah, and I don't care if it's on paper, internet, whatever. Our, we also just brought on a new team called Agency THC. Um, they formed an agency around our magazine to develop our website, uh, to brand you know an agency image and, and uh, tie in some of the loose ends and also bring external visits from you know all over. The, anyone that tags Vegas Cannabis is going to show up at Agency THC, and these guys are helping us tremendously there. They're always in the uh, in our office, you know, brainstorming and trying to push good ideas. And it's a good team. We we, uh, we made a good media partnership with them. And I suggest anybody follow Agency THC if you haven't haven't seen them yet either. Um, and based on those two, I mean, it, again, it doesn't matter that it's that's on paper. You know, we we get a pretty good deal to print. You know, but again, it's it's because it's desirable. People collecting it. I mean, it, this is issue twenty. Yeah, and there's uh, there's also some great deals. If you haven't seen the magazine, pick it up. Uh, and uh, they got coupons in there. Like I said, Nevada Pure's got 20% off your entire purchase. Uh, you got a new insert in there today, uh, this month that has some has some uh, the crutches for for your rolling. And filter then there's tips. Filter tips. And then there's also a, a a coupon in there for a penny pre roll over at MedZen with no purchase necessary. So if you can go in, check them out, and if you don't see anything else you like, you can walk out with a penny. If you flip over the the Pre, the pre-roll coupon and the filter tip coupon. Um, I promise some people are going to laugh at that. Um, no more lung nuggets. There's a cool little picture of a guy. It's the universal symbol for choking. It says, don't choke, no more lung nuggets. And it gives instructions how to make these filter tips and put them into your um, marijuana cigarettes, if you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's awesome. I think it's the first time that anybody's ever uh, put something in a magazine like that. I mean, I've looked up High Times and all their history and it was just a, a, a meeting we were having last minute before we went to print. And these guys were like, yeah, I think we can do it. Can we make it happen? Yeah, let's make it happen. Boom, it's in the magazine. So we have a really good printer. Um, our printer is the whole staff. You could tell that, that the whole staff at Las Vegas Color Graphics is treated like family, you know, right from the top down, from, from the owners of Las Vegas Color Graphics. They also own Medizen. They're, they're in this to, to show off cannabis and also show what we can do and given that that over half of the people in this country have tried cannabis at some point in their life uh, with eight to ten percent or maybe more because they don't all self-report uh, or using it on a monthly basis I think there is a larger community out there that wants to move forward on this issue and is happy to be involved in some way to move that ball a couple of more inches I think it's forward. scary that's a scary point too because what we're having is a lot of going back to your pill point we're having a lot of people calling my wife and I, you know, asking us. They're in their 50s, 60s, 70s, saying, hey, I, I want to get off these pills. And that's been our biggest complaint. And when they do that, it's um, that we don't want to just turn them right over to a sativa. 
You know, you don't you don't even want to give them an indica. Or, I mean, these the percentages of the cannabis nowadays. You have to really do it in moderation, especially if you're a brand new at it. Unless somebody, they have cancer, and then you need to get them that high strength go RSO. You're right, but I'm talking somebody that just maybe has pain tolerance and wants to try smoking a joint and see if that helps. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. You don't, want to get a, you don't want to get them too strong at first because it can turn exactly. them away. Like, like, I'm out like, of control. That's, that's the beauty of, of inhaled cannabis is that you can titrate your dose. It hits your, your lungs and your brain so mm -hmm. quickly that most people, they'll say, oh. Two hit or quitter. Song. Right, exactly. So they get exactly. the two hit or quitter. Exactly that. Respect your, respect your boundaries. Same thing with beer. Um, it's, I don't like this whole argument about alcohol versus cannabis just because, it, you know, everything in moderation can be beneficial. Right, a glass of wine fixes your heart, right? Yep. One glass of wine each sure. day. Well, for me, a couple of beers and, and a joint makes me feel great. And But if I have any more than two beers or, you know, any more than 18 dabs, I might, I might end up, I might end up a little bit incoherent. But, you know, I, I, I don't, I like to be in control and I know where my boundaries are. Everybody can, can figure their boundaries out. Well, some people can't figure out their boundary boundaries. Yeah, I know people part, in their fifties that part, can't respect their boundaries. Yeah, and, and part of that is because you don't feel it right away. It, it has to be processed through your body. And for by, those, you know, they should do topicals. I would I would mm -hmm. suggest anybody that's curious try the Evergreen lotion. Evergreen makes a good lotion. It's a um, it has THC and CBD mm -hmm. in it, and there's it's a topical. It's not going to make you high. It's the it's a first step to say, hey, this ain't bad. That took away my little pain in my elbow or or whatnot so i would suggest you know sampling it out in moderation and talk to your friends about it like anybody that's is getting curious about cannabis if you haven't smoked everybody knows somebody that does so talk to somebody talk to them about ingesting cannabis capsules talk to people about what your options are with this plant and when you're talking about topicals you're not talking about getting high in any way no. because it doesn't break the, no. the, the blood barrier. No. And, and, and personal, unfortunately, you know, I had this open heart surgery three weeks ago. And, um, you know, man, they, they crack your chest and it hurts like hell. And it's going to continue to do so for a few more weeks. And I found that um, I had a CBD lotion that I was, once the, once the incision was healed, you never want to put anything on incision yeah. while it's still open, right, soap and water. But once the, that incision was healed, I started using that CBD oil on and around the periphery, and not only did it take the pain away within a few minutes and, and without any head effect, but it also seems to be healing Sweet. it up a little faster, healing that scar up a little faster. And so there are so many other benefits that, that we're just, that's what we can is all about, opening people's eyes and educating them to the potential of this plant, you know, without necessarily embracing the counterculture lifestyle because there's so much that we can do with this. And, and I've really got to thank you for, for you know, taking the, the step, Bill, to, to take the financial risk to start this magazine and to, to get out there and spread the word. And I've, I've looked through several issues. There's a lot of good information Thank in you. That's there. That's a good compliment. You know, you know it, is, it, does, it, it is a risk. And mm -hmm. when, you, when you believe in something, you put yourself out there and you don't feel like you're even risking it. You feel like it's a part of you. And this magazine, is, it represents my family, it represents my love for my wife, it represents my love for this plant. As you see, as you look through it, you're not going to find smut in there. You're not going to find anybody talking bad about anybody. It's, there's, it's mean, all positive, 100%. You have cute young girls in, in bikinis here to there's look There's some at? cute girls oh. in there, but, but they're, they're, you know, one of them's my daughter. She's in a pink box coupon. There's a donut. You get a free donut in here. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we have poutine. Let's not talk about that one. But this one here, poutinery is a good spot. You can get I, some I free to talk about gravy in, in there. <laughs> There's a lot the of good stuff in there. You guys got to just get own. in there and have some fun. Mm -hmm. This magazine is full of flavor, full of fun. Get in there. If, you, if anybody knows anybody that needs to be a part of it, I welcome you. Reach out to us. Call us. You know, we're not uh, – we're real people. And uh, we have real It's prices. not like going, walking in the office of Condé Nast and trying to have to go through yeah. seven receptionists to see anybody. Exactly. <laughs> and I think the biggest factor of this magazine is that we're in touch with it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have 10 employees, five employees. We don't have a big budget. We, we're not charging our clients a ton of money because we're, we're taking baby steps and mm -hmm. we're staying within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's I think that's a key point, too. You can't we can't we didn't want to be much of a risk. We knew that if we stay within ourselves and grow slowly you know, that we can maintain a, a good audience. And we just grew our, our circulation to 15,000. So wow. we're looking to get it up to 20,000 in about the next four or five months. Mm -hmm. So um, we're in, you know, most of the dispensaries here, we're in a all the doctor shops, we're in 
a lot of good a uh, lot of good smoke shops uh, promote uh, promote American glass Las Vegas glass don't mm-hmm. don't buy Chinese glass um, if you if you wonder if something's Chinese or not just just hold it about shoulder height and drop it on the ground on the concrete and if it breaks it's Chinese if it bounces a few times it's probably made in Las Vegas or America mm-hmm. all right well, with that, we're just about out of time, so we got to go through a couple of announcements here. Uh, we have some events coming up. As I said, Breaking Barriers on May 25th. That's next week, Wednesday. Uh, check out our website for that. we got the Patient's Choice Awards coming up on Saturday, May 28th. More information on our website, also in Vegas Cannabis Magazine on that. Um, the day after, we're holding a potluck uh, in support of our good friend Dabber Dennis, who shout out to Dennis. Uh, he's uh, in the hospital right now with a bone infection. So 100 well, percent. Yeah, 100 percent of the proceeds for this one normally would use these proceeds for our patient program. Our patient program is doing great. So we're uh, we're going to help Dennis and his family out on this because he's got six weeks of hospitalization. Mm-hmm. So hey, they do um, have a botanical garden that Dennis enjoys. I saw that. Yeah, but they moved close. him out into Boulder City now. Uh, so yeah, he's so no more way, gardens. So yeah, he needs so flowers. Garden. Yeah. So, and then we have uh, First Friday, June 3rd, uh, out there at the Arts Factory. Check us out. Come out, get your dope soap and your smoky socks. And then the very next day on Saturday, June 4th, Las Vegas Hemp Fest. So, as I say, more information on that on our page and in Vegas Cannabis Magazine. So, and, you know, be sure to check out our sponsors, Nevada Pure, you know, out there on Boulder Highway, Sahara Wellness on 420 East Sahara, Essence Vegas all over the valley they have it on the west side the east side and las vegas boulevard um get your medicine tested by digipath labs you know quality testing there and if you need help with your card getting legal getting legal.com so check out these people these are the people that make this show possible for us so uh and once again thank you for listening to our show thank you bill from Vegas yeah. cannabis for biggest hat pins we didn't yep. talk about that Vegas let's squeeze pins, that yeah. in look for Vegas those hat pins. we're gonna have some done for weekend so keep, keep an eye out there from uh, some uh weekend hat pins from Vegas yeah. hat pins so. and i would just say we're in primary season the, the candidates are all out there they want to see people they want to hear from you so get out there and let them know how you feel get out there and yes let them on know. two it's beyond uh, yes time to two. do Thank this and go vote yes on two in the next week we have a congressional candidate on the show michelle, yep. michelle fiori. fiori next week yeah. yep so we're looking forward to that thank you for listening thank you again. yes on too hey thanks you guys i appreciate your time hey it's the first lady of powerhouse i'd like to introduce to you the ladies of powerhouse social club this social club 